Hey friends, Kevin here. I've been working on that how to buy a camper van, whether you're using a minivan or cargo van or anything else that you happen to be picking up for van life or any other vehicle that you may need. Exactly the things that I look for and the things I inspect when I go out to buy one of these. And that video was becoming really, really, really long, so I've decided to chop this thing into five or six parts. This is the first part. It's going to make it a little easier to digest, hopefully hold your attention a little bit better. So this first part is going to be my basic philosophy and what I'm going to do when I get to the person's house to look at the vehicle. So let's get to it. Now, at this point, I've already email the person a time or two and preferably talk to them on the phone because I want to get some things out of the way. One, I want to know if there's a lien banknote, anything on that vehicle or if it's paid for, even if it's an older vehicle, because you can't tell you may be dealing with something that's only a couple of thousand dollars. That doesn't mean they haven't done some kind of deal down at the local. We'll take anybody's title for a few hundred dollar place or something. So I want to make sure that's out of the way. Second of all, I want to make sure it's their vehicle. You know, not something they're selling for their cousin, brother, nephew, something else. I want to be dealing with the person that actually owns the vehicle. And once I have that established, then I'm going to go through some basic questions with them that may not have been covered in their description on Facebook, Marketplace, or Craigslist, or wherever else I happen to stumble across this, the local newspaper. But here's the things I'm going to get into. Number one, I'm going to ask them why they're selling this vehicle. There's lots of reasons for why they would be doing it and lots of valid reasons, but I just want to get them opened up and talking a little bit. I want to know how long they've had the vehicle. Now, granted, I'm going to find all this information out later anyway, but I'm kind of just establishing things. And the way you get people talking and doing that is by asking them really easy questions up front. And the next question I'm going to ask them is, what's the last thing you repaired on this van, on this vehicle? Because I want to know if they have had to do something major to it. And most people will be honest with you. Some people won't. But here's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for them to give me a simple answer. Well, the last thing we did is we put a set of brakes on it. Fine. Well, the last thing we did is we changed the starter or we changed the alternator. Well, that's to be expected if you're dealing with a, a vehicle that's seven or eight years old or older. If I find out they've had this vehicle for a long time and I get one of these answers of, oh, we've had this thing for nine years and we've never had to do anything to it except put gas in it. That tells me the truth. That tells me that they probably haven't ever done anything to it other than drive it. And that means there's going to be a lot of deferred maintenance that if I buy this vehicle, I'm going to have to do. And that's fine as long as I know that up front. But did you see where I'm going with this? Small talk and friendly is fine. And at the time I'm doing this, I'm walking around. I'm looking at stuff. You're opening the door. You're looking inside. You're looking at the condition of the tires. I'm looking for the little four-digit date code on the tires to see how old the tires are. Because I care as much about that as I do how good the tread is on the tires. And I'm just you know, making mental notes at this point and trying to get them loosened up and talking to give me the answers that I want. Because after those first couple of questions, questions like, what's the last thing you had repaired on this vehicle? Again, there's reasons for everything that I'm doing, including the types of questions I ask. So at this point, we have this established. I've looked the vehicle over sitting in their yard or their driveway it appears to be what I think it's going to be and what they have said it's going to be from a rough visual inspection. So I let them know I want to take it for a test drive. And I'm going to get into, in these other video parts, exactly what I do on these test drives because some of it's going to surprise you, guaranteed. But I want to let them know that I'm going to be going with this thing for an hour, maybe two. And here's the way I get around this. I let them know that I, I want to take it for a test drive. 
I may swing by a mechanics, you know, and get a second opinion on it if they don't mind. And I also let them know, hey, you know, I haven't eaten, so I'm probably going to stop and grab some lunch somewhere on the way back while I'm driving my car. Is that all right? That buys me time to go and do everything that I want to do. It buys me an hour or two's time with the vehicle. If I get any objections to that, I'm probably going to be out of there. As I think back to all the times I've done this, dozens of vehicles over the years, I don't think I've ever gotten an objection to it. I'm leaving my vehicle there. You know, if they ask for an ID, I'm more than happy to show them my driver's license. So it's it's just not going to be an issue. And I'm going to make sure they have a phone number, a cell phone number, so they can call. Anything much past an hour, I'm going to go ahead and call the people from wherever I am anyway and go, hey, I was just checking in with you, let you know I'm still, you know, having this thing checked out. And, you know, it may be another hour or so before I get back to your house. Just wanted to let you know. And there's never any problem. Just keep them updated what's going on so they know that you didn't run off with their vehicle. But one of the last things I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a little bag out of my vehicle to put in their vehicle. It's going to be something along the lines of, hey, you know, let me grab this bag real quick. And if they give me a really freaky look, I'm going to go, hey, this is, you know, a little computer tester and a couple things to, to test the vehicle with. And what I generally use is an old laptop or notebook computer bag because it's the perfect size to put everything I need in in order to be able to do the test I'm going to do on this vehicle once I get it out of their driveway. So these next couple of videos are going to be one, exactly what's in that bag and why I carry those things and why you should have these items in your bag, none of which are really expensive, but all of which are necessary. And then we're going to get into the first thing I'm going to do, which is stop hopefully within a mile of their house as soon as I leave, so I can start performing these tests, which are going to be done before I do the long test drive. And the important thing is anybody can do this. Even if you think you don't have a lot of mechanical knowledge, that's fine. You don't have to be a mechanic to do this. Now, could I have a service do this for me? Yeah, probably. And those services, they're really good at writing really nice reports. There's not, I guarantee I'm going to be more thorough than somebody I'm paying $150 to that I've never met in another town. You know, no, no offense to those people that do that for a living. They provide a service, but quite honestly, I'm confident I can do it better because I know what I'm looking for for potential problems. So let me know down in the comments below if this makes sense to you, if this is something you want me to keep on and keep rolling this series of videos out because I guarantee you're going to see some things that you probably haven't seen before, haven't thought of before. We'll talk soon.